So question five of Leaving Cert Higher Level Applied Maths starts off initially as a connected particles question. So we have a block P mass 6.3 and Q 2.5 held at rest on a rough surface. So now there's going to be some coefficient of friction. Uh, they're connected by light and extensible training path surface with poly uh, P is on a 25 degree incline. Aha, coefficient of friction is 0.2. So mu is 0.2. So show in separate diagrams the forces on the forces acting on the blocks while they are moving. Now I don't like to do separate diagrams personally, but if the question says so, I have to do it. I've just been used to one big diagram. So I'll just draw the little pulley here. So this is going to be P, and then we have Q. So we're going to start with P. So P has its weight downwards of 6.3 times acceleration due to gravity. We can split that up into components, which I'll actually do in a different color. This here is 25 degrees. So this is 6.3 G cos 25, 6.3 G sine 25. Uh, we're going to have the tension acting here. We're going to have the normal reaction force acting up here. And then we're going to have the force due to kinetic friction here. And I'll actually call this RP and FKP just because the reaction force at P is going to be different to the reaction force at Q. So I'll actually solve for the reaction force, which is 6.3 G cos 25. So 6.3 times 9.8 times cos 25 is 55.955 newtons. So that means that we're given that mu is 0.2. So FK is uh, 0 0.2 times 55.955. 55.955 which is 27.978 to the same degree of accuracy uh, and then of course it's going to be accelerating down this way with just a common acceleration because there's one string and one poly or a shared poly now Q is going to be accelerating this way it has a mass of 2.5, so 2.5 g. It will have the tension going this way, and it will have the friction uh, going this way, so that would be FKQ, and this force would be RQ, so the reaction force at Q. Now, the reaction force at Q is just 2.5 g, which is 24.5. So FKQ, sure this is FKP. So FKQ is 0 0.2 times 24.5, which is 4.9 newtons. Because I screwed this up before. Ah, 0 0.2 times 59.955 is not 27.978, not sure where that's coming from. Should be giving 11.191 newtons. So I'm not sure where that inaccuracy is coming from, but whatever. So, now we have to solve for the acceleration. So, if we look at P in the direction of the acceleration, so what's helping P accelerate? Well, it's just the 6.3 G sine 25. And what's not helping it is the friction and the tension. So the tension we don't know. The friction is 11.191, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now for Q, what's helping Q accelerate is the tension and what's not helping it accelerate is this. So we have T minus 4.9, and that's equal to its mass, which is 2.5 times A. So 
So uh, if we add the equations, uh, the tensions will cancel. And then we get this is 8.8a, and I'll just approximate this, 6.3 times 9.8 times sine 25, minus 4.9 minus 11.191. It just gives us up an answer of 10. So a is 10 divided by 8.8, .8, which is about 1.136 meters per second squared. Okay, the second part is a rather complex looking uh, linear motion question. So Anya travels by car from her house to work each morning. On Monday morning, she starts her car. So it's uniformly for 40 seconds to a speed of 22 and a half meters per second. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a velocity time graph. This, so I'll label this as Monday time velocity. So she accelerates to 22 and a half meters per second in 40 seconds. This is 22 and a half in 40 seconds. I'm actually kind of lower this T because then I was going to need more values later. Uh, she travels the speed for eight minutes until she uniformly decelerates. That'll work. Now eight minutes, so eight times 60 would be 480 seconds. And now her time to decelerate, I'll just label as T1. This is for Monday. <clears throat> now Tuesday, uh, she leaves her house 140 seconds later than the day before. So I'm actually gonna do a little bit of labeling. I'm just label this as Monday. Let's let the total time taken for her to travel to work be 40 plus 480 plus T1. So the time overall is T1 plus 520. Now for Tuesday. Uh, it leaves her 140 seconds later and she takes the same route. She accelerates at 1.5 meters per second for 20 seconds. She's gonna reach a speed of V in 20 seconds. Maintains the speed for six minutes. Now six times 60 is 360. And then decelerates T2. Okay. So we're gonna figure out what V is. So S U V A T. So V zero, time taken is 20 and we're looking for A. So V is U plus AT. So V is zero plus, or well, what is our acceleration? Acceleration is one and a half. So that would be 1.5. Is zero plus 20 times 1.5 is 30. So we can just replace this with 30. Now the total time here is 140 seconds quicker than the total time here. So that's 20 plus 360 plus T2. So that would be that total time is 140 plus 20 plus 360, which is 520. So T2 plus 520. Now if we compare these, we can simply deduce that T1 is T2. Simple as. So, now what we have to do is calculate the time in which she leaves on Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning, uh, we have to figure out the distance traveled before, um, before we figure out the time because we need to figure out what T2 is. So, what we can do is we can actually compare uh, these two areas because these two areas are going to be the same. Uh, it'll have the same distance traveled. So in the first one, we have a triangle. So I'll just say this is Mondays. So we have one half times the base times the height plus base times height for the rectangle 
plus a half base times the height, 22 and a half. Now, 40 times 22.5 over 2 is 450. Plus 480 times 22 and a half is 10,800. And that'd be plus 11.25 T1. Now 450 plus 10,800 is 11,250. So this is this. It's gonna be the first one. Now on Tuesday, we have a half base time site, so a half by 20 by 30 plus base times height, which is 360 by 30, plus a half T1 by uh, 30, because remember T1 is equal to T2, so we can sort of use them interchangeably. So it's gonna be 300 plus, now 360 times 30 is 10,800, plus 15 T1, so that'd be 10,800 plus 300, is 11,100 plus 15 T1 is S. Now, of course, these two are equal. So 11.25 T1 plus 11,250 is 11,100 plus 15 T1. So, if we subtract 11,100 from both sides, we get 150. And then if you do 15 minus 11.25, that's 3.75 T1. So T1 is 40. So 40 seconds. Now remember, her total time here is 20 plus 360 plus T2. So 20 plus 360 plus T2, we know C1s are 40, which is 420 seconds, which is... Uh, I can't do maths. Seven minutes. So she arrives at 8.30 uh, on Tuesday as well. So we have 8.30 minus seven, which means that she left at 8.23 on Tuesday. And that is the answer to question five, high level applied maths paper.